So I have to start this class by just saying thank you to Roberta in Hawaii. Aloha, Roberta. Um, Robert, Roberta contacted me last week and asked if I could show everyone how to make icicle ornaments. And I'm sorry, Roberta, I've never made an icicle before and I don't know how. So I have to um, practice and figure it out. Uh, maybe in the future I'll have an icicle ornament tutorial. But today, instead, I thought I'd give you another idea for ornaments, and that is these head pin ornaments, like this. And what is a head pin? A head pin is basically just a little bead that's put on the end of a wire. So here's a little one that I did a while ago. This one is longer. This is the head pin part right here. And I just put this on a copper wire. So what kind of wire do you use? Basically anything. Um, I got this galvanized wire at the hardware store in the picture hanging section, galvanized steel wire. So you can use steel. This stuff is really cheap. I also, I have this copper wire that I bought a while ago from Rio Grande. Now, wire comes in a measurement called a gauge. And one of the things you just need to remember about the gauge is that the higher the gauge number, the skinnier the wire. So both of these are 18 gauge and they work fine with my big beads on the 332 mandrel. But when I go to um, try and put on the little complementary beads, like these ones in the center, sometimes the wire is too wide and the beads don't fit. So I would say, you know, anywhere 18 to 20 gauge is maybe what you want. Um, to buy to do your head pins. So that's wire. Now, I usually measure out my wire in like a six inch, six inch length, and that gives me a four to a five inch little bead, a uh, little ornament that I can make. And one of the things that's kind of tough with this wire is because it's so skinny, it's hard to hold on to. So let me see, where are my tools? Where are my tools? Oh, I gotta find my tools. I'll be right back. Okay, so as I was saying, I use about a six inch piece of wire for my head pins. And you just cut it off with your little nippers like that. Now, one of the things is the, the impulse will be you wanna hold the wire like a mandrel and spin it, but it's really hard because they're so skinny and they're so little. So instead, um, I'll either hold my wire with a pair of tweezers and put my head pin on that way, or you can get some hemostats and kind of clip it into the hemostats and hold it that way. Or here's my goofy engineering psycho weirdo. I wrap it around a regular mandrel and hold it this way. Um, so whatever floats your boat. When we're putting the glass on the tip of this head pin, I don't usually spin it around. Um, I just leave it in one sp spot and glob the glass on. And I'll show you that next, how to do it. Okay, Torture Rooney is fired up, and I have my head pin just kind of clipped into my little um, hemostats here. Now, you don't want to stick that wire directly in the flame because it's so skinny that it's just going to burn off. But you do want to get it hot enough that your glass is going to stick. So I just heat it up gently, and then I just go ahead and start globbing the glass on the end. And, you know, when you're making a big glob, um, it's pretty easy to get the glass on. You don't have to worry about twisting anything too much. So let's go ahead and get this glob on. And you can marver it if all you want is a little glob at the end. You can go ahead and marver this down if you like. And now what I'm going to do for this first head pin is I'm going to just put some red dots right on the ends, right all over it. Just some little red dots around. 
This one actually came out cool. This one actually looks like an icicle <laughs> when you're done with it. Let's see, I need a red dot there. Okay, now I'm gonna grab my tweezers. I'm just heating up this little glob of glass and I'm, you want it kind of multi. Now these pet, head pins don't have any bead release on them, so don't put the bead release on. You want them to stick. All right, there's my glob heated up, and I'm just going to grab the tippy end and kind of pull it out a little bit into a triangle. And those dots will stretch. And there you go. That is your first head pin. Probably needs a little work. <laughs> it's not my best work, but you get the idea. Easy peasy. So the second head pin I want to show you is using your presses with these head pins. So I've got some red glass that I'm just globbing on the end here. It's so weird, like not spinning this hemostat because I feel like I want to spin it like a mandrel, but this works if you spin the glass instead. Just kind of go around. Get that glob on there. Get that glass on there. All right, now we're going to heat it up. And I've got my little lentil press ready to go. Hopefully there's no bead release inside of it. Heat that little glob up. Now, of course, you guys can make your lentils as big or as small as you like. I'm going to try to use the little teeny tiny one here. Lay it down. Give it a little smash a -rooney. Oh, we probably needed more glass. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know. You know, it's okay if you have to re-smash your lentils multiple times. There's no rules and you're not cheating. And sometimes it just doesn't come out perfect the first time. So we add a little more glass. And we heat it up. Why do I feel guilty that I had to do this a second time? That's so funny. <laughs> There's no guilt in art. Okay, down it goes. Put the lentil press on it. And there we go. There's a little lentil. And then, of course, once you have your lentil, you can decorate it however you like. I'm going to go ahead and just put some little dots all around it. I would encourage you guys to, like, go to Etsy or go to Pinterest or Instagram. They call these icicle ornaments even though they're not really icicles, at least to me anyways. Or sun catchers, I guess in the off season you hang them out on your patio as little sun catchers. And there you go. That is the second head pin that I wanted to show you. Don't be afraid to use your presses. Now another tool that you guys can use to make your head pins are mashers. And I buy most of my mashers off of Etsy. Um, these ones came, I think, from Bulgaria, a long ways away. But these are little um, angel wing mashers. And then I've got, here's some, some examples of leaf mashers right here. And I've got these. These are big old round leaf mashers that I got. So um, mashers are fun. Mashers are great. I'm going to use this masher right here. This one is from Mr. Ray Skeen. Um, I bought it off of Etsy. And he actually made some mashers. They're head pin mashers. And they have this little, um, this little groove in the end of it where you can put your wire. And it fits like just perfectly in the masher. So let me get a blob on and show you how we do this. Okay, I got a little light green blob going here, and I'm just blobbing it around on the wire. <laughs> the good thing about head pins and using mashers and presses and that sort of thing is that you don't have to be really precise. Just get a glob on there. Now, because this masher is really long lengthwise, I'm going to go ahead and wrap some glass 
around kind of headed out a little bit here trying to give it at least the same sh basic shape as that masher that I'm going to use and who knows maybe we'll need more again I think um, it's always good if you need to add glass adding glass to something is a lot easier than trying to take glass away let me just straighten this little guy out okay I got these little mashers and I'm heating up that glass like so getting it hot and multi and then into the masher it goes and a little gentle squeeze and there you go there's my leaf and that's another head pin for you so the last head pin I want to show you guys um, I use this one a lot when I'm making like my flowery head pins and I just have my copper wire here and I'm just gonna put a little bulb on the end of it if I can get it to stick there we go and now I have that encased goldstone that we did I don't know a week ago two weeks ago what else and I'm just gonna use that little brush stroke method of going down push down drag pull up and I'm just gonna go over the top of that little bulb of clear that I put on there and you're basically making like a little flower and it's so tiny and I'm so old and I can't see it but just go around maybe you do you know one layer maybe you do a second layer Ugh. Ugh, this goldstone's so stiff it's crazy Okay, two layers will be it. I'm just filling in the spaces here. I think that's a nice little bulb. And then I'm just going to take my tweezers and just kind of smush the ends down a little bit. Just like that. And there you go. That is a little bulb that I use that method on this one right here so you can see that little bulb okay um, final note I do put my head pins in the kiln and I anneal them just like my regular beads so put them in the kiln do your annealing and then you can do your decorating and your assembly um, after they're annealed so now would be a good time to pull out all of your jewelry findings because you're going to need them to make these ornaments. So this year for my um, ornaments, I'm going to do themes. So this is my little Christmas themed ornament. There's our little red head pin that we made earlier. And then I just used my lamp work beads to do this Christmas theme the snowman, the ugly sweater, and the gingerbread man. Now, to fix the top of this, it's just your basic jewelry um, fixture, jewelry thing. I take my jewelry pliers and I twist the wire over 90 degrees. And then I make a loop around my pliers, like so. So it looks like that, just a loop. Then I pull the pliers out and I grab the top of the loop and I just wrap. I just wrap that left, leftover wire around the base of the loop and all the way to the base of the bead. And that kind of gets everything secure and tight and purdy. There. And then I clip off any remaining wire. And a lot of times you'll have just a little extra room where you can go in and this little sharp nubby, I just squeeze it in there. Squeeze it down. And there you go, you guys. That is 
your Christmas tree ornaments. Uh, sun catchers, they're called. And if you make them shorter, you could probably uh, wear it as a pendant on the off season. Anyways, I hope this gives you some food for thought. Have a great weekend. I'll be back next week with another video. Bye.